knock deep bimbos walking like hoes. You could have them bimbos, and I'll keep my women like Flojo. <laughs> that was from Sir Mix a lot, who also has one of the greatest quotes of all times when he said, LA face with an Oakland booty. I'm not sure what's more amazing or funnier is the fact that he said it or the fact that everybody knew exactly what he meant when he said it. <laughs> but anyway, amazing quote and some amazing lyrics from Sir Mix a lot. This is Mark Belton, Super Training TV, Super Training Gym, the strongest gym in the West. We got some questions to answer today for the Power Project. Question number one comes from Ramsey or A. Ramsey. And his question is about bench stroke, having a long bench stroke, a long way to go on the bench press. Um, he lost some weight recently, and he has a further range of motion to deal with than he used to. And I myself am dealing with that, and as soon as I started to lose weight, bam, I hurt my shoulder. So the first thing you're going to have to do if you're a longer-limbed athlete is you're going to have to take care of yourself. You're going to have to take care of your shoulder, and you're going to have to try to win the hypertrophy going to have to build up some hypertrophy in your pecs, in the interior delt, and you're also going to have to maybe do a little bit of stretching in order to kind of keep all this stuff open all the time so it's not forward. You don't want to have this forward and have a long range of motion because then you'll end up being like me, <laughs> which isn't good, trust me. Um, it puts you in some really bad positions. My shoulder's been killing me over the last couple uh, months due to this increased range of motion. So what do we do about it? You can go to mobilitywad.com and check out some various stretches from uh, my boy, Kelly Sturette. You can also check out um, some information from Donnie Thompson, who gives out some great information on how to keep the pecs opened up and how to keep them healthy, how to keep the shoulders healthy and all that kind of stuff as well. Uh, on top of that, <clears throat> you want to take care of your pecs. You want to take care of your shoulders. And the way that you do that, it's kind of the old-fashioned way, just to train them. Get in there, make sure you're doing some uh, exercise like incline dumbbell presses. Make sure you're doing some flies, maybe even some cable crossovers. I know it sounds ridiculous, but something like cable crossover is going to keep your pecs and shoulders uh, healthier, <clears throat> especially with the increased range of motion. You're going to have to come down further, so make sure you're doing your dumbbell work. Um, the dumbbells can come down further than the barbell can. Make sure you come down past the, past your body on the way down with those dumbbells and kind of rest there, maybe a little bit of a pause. Pause benches will help you as well. Um, so there's a lot of different things that you, that you have at your arsenal uh, to do. But first things first is <clears throat> when you're not good at something, realize it and realize it's going to take time to build it or it's going to take time to regain it or it's going to take time to build it back up. In your case, after losing some body weight and after increasing the range of motion due to the lack of thickness, um, you're going to have to almost like start over again. So it's very crucial that in your attempts, uh, during, at, once you're done with your warm-ups, when you're making your attempts, you're going to have to select your jumps appropriately. I think Donnie Thompson uh, really nailed it with his Thompson squat cycle where he does five sets of two reps and adds 20 pounds each set. He does set number one where it's fairly difficult. Um, maybe it's a six or a seven. Maybe it's a seven about on a scale of one to ten. Where you can maybe say 70% or so. And you add about 20 pounds per every set until you're done. Everyone's going to be a little different. Maybe you could add more. Maybe you, could add, maybe you need to add less. Um, but the point is to get in a lot of good quality work. Get in a lot of volume. Um, and get in a lot of volume with the heavy weight, a lot of quality work with the heavy weight, and teach your body to push through those ranges of motion, especially those new ranges of motion, over and over and over again. Repetition will make you great, and when you do things perfectly, when you practice perfectly, you'll become perfect on the platform. So keep working on that. Um, also, like I said, keep doing things to make sure that your shoulders and pecs and things like that stay healthy. Push-ups are good. Dumbbell presses, flies, yada, yada, yada. I think I already said it all as far as that goes. And you might have to start doing a little bit of uh, rotator cuff work. You might have to start doing some things a little differently because your body's different. So it makes, it makes sense now that you'll have to do things that you've never done before. Question number two is, I believe from Nick uh, off the YouTubes, and uh, 
I think that was his name, or it's like Zo Nine Six or something. I don't remember. Anyway, um, his question was: He has an inv an invention. He's a college strength coach, and he wants to know how he can make this invention. I'm sure a lot of you out there have inventions. They have ideas. It's not an invention until you uh, until you see it all the way through, though, in my opinion. So for now, you just have an idea, my friend. And you need to follow through. That's all, that's all All there is to it. You need to follow through. When you follow through, you need to realize that you are following through on something that either A, nobody ever thought of, or B, 95% of the people, or maybe even 99% of the people, in, in the case of the slingshot, never followed through with it. So be the leader, take charge, and follow through with it. How do you follow through with it? Like, I don't have any idea. There's some mosquitoes out here. I better get my walk on. Um, I don't have any idea where to start. First thing you need to realize is that this process is going to suck. The second thing that you need to realize, the only person that can help you through your dreams, the only person that can help you with your dreams, the only person that can make this product that you're thinking of is yourself. You are the only person that's going to be able to help yourself. You're the only person that even cares. I don't care. You said you can send me one. Um, but uh, I'd love to try it. So you can send me one. Send one to the gym. 20, 2010 3rd Street, Sacramento, California. I don't know the area code. I think it's like 9. I don't know. Anyway, just send it there. 2010 3rd Street, Sacramento. I hope it gets to me. But um, you're going to have to... Uh, do a little research on the interwebs. I'd imagine that the product that you're trying to make, you are going to find some. Uh, you're going to need to find some uh, resources to produce it. Um, but let's just say it's made out of metal, for example. Go to uh, some welders locally and say, "Hey, you can make a couple of these. You can make like five of these. Get a couple of them made up." That's a train, ladies and gentlemen. Woo! Pretty loud. Should be good now. <laughs> um, you know, go to like a local welder and say, hey, do you think you can produce a couple of these? Or maybe you can produce a bunch of these. I'd like to sell these. I'd like to get these going online. So, you know, you probably have some people in your area that can help you a little bit better than you would think. Um, if it's made out of some other type of material, try to research it. Try to uh, Google it. Um, I did everything with the slingshot on my phone. I did everything with the slingshot on my phone. I researched everything on my phone at Starbucks and uh, just took things one step at a time and started to try to eliminate who I thought was good, who I thought could help me, check, who I thought couldn't help me, check. And uh, just kept moving forward from there and then took a leap of faith and ordered like... Uh, twenty thousand dollars worth of them or something like that in the beginning um but i was confident that it that i would move a lot of product uh and that uh the slingshot would be successful um have confidence in yourself believe in yourself i know it's all like you know stuff you hear all the time um but hopefully coming from me if you're a fan of the power project hopefully that means something to you Hopefully it means something to you coming from somebody that has invented something and somebody who has brought something to market. Um, that's really the key is just you got to realize once I started getting in deep with the slingshot, I really just um, got frustrated at a couple points. Uh, you know, giving up was never an option, but uh, I just um, kind of came to the realization like my mom can't help me, my dad can't help me, my wife can't help me, my kids can't help me, my friends can't help me. I'm going to have to help myself, you know. Um, you are going to have people that are obviously going to be able to assist you in some ways, but you need to understand that you are the only person that's going to be able to get this done. You have to realize that in life, a lot of times, there is an actual guy who pushes a button and makes things happen. And in this case, that's going to have to be you. And that is it from supertraining.tv.